Well, hello, my fellow car modelers. How are you doing today? I've got a really cool guest. If you don't recognize him, you're going to recognize him after this. And he's got, a, he's got a strange name and a strange channel on YouTube, building model cars. Oh, well, it's Billy Strange. Hey. <laughs> and uh, I, I just recently met Billy, and I checked out his channel. If you haven't found his channel, you got to go there, man. Really great channel. You've only been doing it for like four months, huh, Billy? Yeah, I think I started, what, in April? Yeah. I, I, just, I switched over to doing this stuff, I think, around April or something like that. So, yeah, I'm still trying to find my footing of, like, the balance of what I like to do versus yeah. what people are interested in. And it's a, we can talk about it, it's a little bit of a transition from oh, what I yeah. was doing. But um, I have a lot of fun doing this. This is, it is. Still it's a blast. Content, so, yeah, I just, it's kind of like. I'm having fun learning the process and how differently mm -hmm. this space works, the model car space on YouTube works versus the sim racing space that I was in. So yeah, I'm having I'm having a great time. You know, I had just found out about you through BG, and we met up on one of the live streams during uh, during the 48 hour, just like with Mike, the scale yep. model outlaw, and we were all having a good time and. And I'm like, wow, it comes to find out. I look at this this Billy Strange, and the strange thing about Billy Strange is, wow, it's like, hey, look, it's me, but he's a younger, thinner, better looking, more likable me. Uh, <laughs> wow. uh, I just, <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I just, I don't know. We found out we have a lot in common, even we outside do. of yeah. model cars, if, if you guys knew. <laughs> We actually had a two-hour conversation before we even started recording this, yep. but we did record it. Who knows? That might become another podcast, but about other things. And and uh, and we just we just hit it off real good. But you, the channel and the type of models that you build and and everything, I think it's pretty interesting. I think you got a lot to bring to the community. So, man, I'm I'm glad to have you on. I'm I I'm, it appreciative of being asked on yeah bg has been instrumental in uh kind of introducing me to everybody and it's been really nice he reached out before and then kind of messaged back and forth and then he's like hey you want to you want to hop in and meet everybody i'm like really uh yeah. yeah that'd be great and everybody look when we did the uh streams like everybody's been super welcoming yeah. in fact not just the streams like the community in general has just been super welcoming about everything and it's been really nice to be in a space when again coming from sim racing it, the the nature of sim racing is competitive already and there's just a, you know there's the typical politicking and that kind of stuff yeah. it's just nice to be in a space where everybody is really encouraging mm -hmm. everybody well you know i know you're always going to have people that are detractors but for the most part everybody is very welcoming everybody is very encouraging like they want to know what's going on they want to see what you're working on oh um, yeah yeah and the amount i think the cool part about this space is the amount that i've learned um you know my dad does uh has always built model cars still does uh, my brother just got back into it so oh, that's cool so relying on them to learn a lot and then you know being able to go on youtube and all of a sudden realizing that oh my gosh there's this whole community of people that build model cars this is amazing and going through everybody's channel not just one person just seeing how to's and even the build videos help me figure things out as to what to do or at least to help speed up my learning process yeah so it's it's been a lot of fun everybody like i said it, everybody's been very welcoming. When I got to meet everybody in the live stream, everybody was super cool. Everybody was really welcoming and just didn't make me feel like I was like an imposter or like an intruder or out of place or no. anything. So that was, that was really nice. That, and that was so cool to, to see some people I hadn't known. Like I hadn't seen your channel. I didn't know about yeah. you. There's so many YouTubers that, that have been starting up and I tried to scam through, skim through and find I love finding a new YouTuber, you know, model car that is. Um, love checking out and see what they do. But I could tell on the live stream, first of all, <clears throat> holy cow, you got a way better setup than I do. 
No, I'm going to have to pick well, your brain on some technical stuff. That's, I'm gonna that's need a holdover to, from the sim yeah. racing stuff, but yeah. Yeah, so I could tell that you have a background. You have It's not your first rodeo. Your channel isn't four months old. Your model car content is four months old. You were doing something different on your channel. So um, so you're starting over, but not, not really just beginning. So you... Right. And it, it, I could see that right away. When I went back and watched your channel after we met, I was like, wow, this is like really, really well done content. I appreciate and, that. And very, very interesting. I mean, you, you cover what I like about it is you cover all sorts of different types of model car stuff. And, and you're really into a lot of stuff. And of course, everybody, he's a real race car driver. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I never officially <laughs> retired, but you know, I'm I'm probably past the the prime moment of doing anything super competitive anymore. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I I raced dirt sprint cars for a, a big stint when I was a kid. We raced RC cars. I got to run quarter midgets for a little bit. We didn't have a whole lot of money, but my parents made it work, so we got to run quarter midgets a little bit. And then I didn't really get to race any real life stuff until two thousand seven. And, yeah. uh, I ran a, they call them lightning sprints. Now we, um, we, they were for a while, the organization I ran, which was BCRA out here in California, yeah. they call it midget lights. Um, but it's mm -hmm. basically a midget chassis with a, a thousand or 1200 CC air cooled, uh, engine started there, realized, oh, no kidding. yeah, realized that although it was fun, it wasn't what I really wanted to do. I wanted to be like my dad. Um, yeah. at 28 years old, uh, I wanted to be like my dad. My dad raced flat track to begin with, and then went on to race, um, dirt modifieds, dirt, super modifieds and dirt sprint cars. Um, oh, mainly wing. boy. Yeah. Mainly the wing stuff. Super so, modified. Yeah. It's not what you, it's not the, um, it's not like the lay down stuff, like the asphalt stuff. The super modifieds no. were basically just taking what they were running in the not quite the outlaws yet. What kind of predated the outlaws? They're taking those engines, like a 377 or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And instead of like a 320 or a 305 or something, which is what they considered modified. So there's still the box tubing, you know, frame rails and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's what my dad ran. And then he moved and on to and he raced for a lot of other people, ran sprint cars, and then they still had which really is like a limited sprint class, but they still called it modifieds out here because they were technically using the box tubing, but it was, it was a sprint car chassis. Right. Um, right. So the, the better, the better name for it would be like a limited sprint. It was a 320 uh, without a nose wing. And they okay. might have yeah. had, yeah, they might they have ran out here. I remember those. They ran those out here yeah. too. I know so they had the ran, 320s and the 360s. Yeah. Yeah. My dad ran a lot of that. So, uh, and every once in a while, he got to run like a full blown, you know, four ten, sprint car and stuff like mm, that. But man, was, um, when I was little, his main thing was running up at Placerville Speedway, and me being in the sands, <coughs> we would, we would run, uh, or he would run the uh, the three twenties, and uh, he won a lot. So I wanted to be like my dad. So that's why I, I finally was like, well, I don't want to run the midget light. I don't want to run the the mini sprint or Obviously, whatever it is. Yeah, definitely. I, I want to be like my dad. So I just jumped both feet in uh, to run in a 360. And uh, yeah, that took a while. That was a very eye opening experience. Yeah. Yeah. I bet. And, and what's cool about that is so you grew up around racing and all that. And it's neat, you know, going into model cars. Uh, I always get a charge out of uh, guys that have a racing experience, real life racing experience, bringing it to the model car level. I mean, you, you kind of have an understanding of real automobiles and it just brings something very cool into the model building. And I could see that with what you were doing. Plus, you do a, you do a lot of uh, I mean, you do street stuff and you do a lot of race car stuff and and, and especially getting yeah. into like like the Porsche stuff. And, and the, you had a, you got a couple of things that you were working on that were like old prototype road racing and all that stuff. So, yeah, and I. I I just I like I really get into into in tune to that kind of uh, you know model builder that's like doing doing a lot of different type of racing and stuff I like really, that. That's yeah, primarily I, what I build. I really thought that I would be mainly into the race car stuff because as a kid I've always been 
you know, because of my dad and, you know, we'd sit down and watch Thursday night thunder and yeah, and we'd watch wide world of sports, you know, the, all the ESPNs, the stock car, the NASCAR stuff we watched, yep. we watched all of that, you know, when we weren't, when my dad wasn't racing on a Saturday or whatever, that's what we were doing. We were watching racing. So very cool. I always wanted to be a race car driver. And then I collected everything race car stuff. So when I got, I'm going to say, I, this is kind of a, a segue into like how I got started. But as a kid, my dad helped me build models, but I'm not totally positive. I ever built a model on my own. Oh, really? But we built race cars. We were always into the race car stuff. So then I, th I want to say one of the first model car kits as a kid was probably Earnhardt's Wrangler. Maybe oh, the nice. AMT one. I think okay. that's, or it, I don't think it was the Ricky Rudd one. It was the 15, whichever one that one was from AMT. I think it was AMT. Pretty uh, simple. I, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, no, real, that was the, <clears throat> that was the, basic, uh, um, basically a shell, like a curbside kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Dad painted that for me and kind of showed me like how things to go together, how to read instructions. And my thing was the decals. So I would mm. cut each individual sponsor and little stp and all that out i would cut those in i didn't know any better and my dad would just let me do it because those are all supposed to be just put on in one contingency yeah. all the contingency stick. and i didn't do that i would cut each individual one out so i i dabbled in building model cars and as i got older i would do more but i'm not totally sure i ever built one on my own and then by the time i was i don't know 12 13 um I believe we, I didn't build model cars anymore. I got into yeah. music. I got into other stuff. Um, yep. And back then we were part of Sacramento auto modelers, you know, Sam. So yes. I remember going to the meetings with my dad. I remember going to some shows, but it, it's kind of like real fuzzy for me. And so when I say I just started building model cars, I mean, actually building, like solving problems and 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 doing all that stuff all on my own with the help of asking, obviously, and then watching you guys. But yeah, my first kit that I finished was that Hasegawa Sauber Mercedes C9. I barely finished that because I wanted to do the model show at the Autorama up here in Sacramento. And that was the very end of April. I built that thing in like six weeks. Yeah. So it's kind of been a crash course. I've really enjoyed it. I've enjoyed like watching everybody else's stuff, learning, interacting. That's something else I never really did with the sim racing stuff. I really have kind of threw myself at interacting with the community in their videos, like really trying to go and say, hey, you know, wanting to do the same, be encouraging because I saw other people doing it. So I wanted to be encouraging and be like, that's really cool. Like, or that helped me out a lot. So it's it's kind of come like full circle but in an in an off kind of way <laughs> yeah i've i've attempted to start models <laughs> as the years have gone through but never really i never finished one um didn't do it very seriously just kind of like oh this kind of interests me because i love the <laughs> it's funny i love the box art oh so boy I would, yep right so up my alley I would, yep so i would collect the kits because my again my dad has always stayed in the hobby, so I would know what's going on. And then we ended up owning a hobby store from 2012 to 2018. So whenever I would see like a cool box art, I would be like, eh, maybe someday I'll build that. I'll, I'll go ahead and get that. But I never like, but I never really like sat down and just finished a kit. I'd kind of like piece it together. Like one of the things I remember doing as a kid would I would draw the sponsor decals. Again, all my stuff was race cars back then. So I would draw the sponsor decals on paper with colored pencil and then stick them on the body and then clip out the wheels uh, and the tires and then just kind of sit it on a shelf, kind of like eye level and just like, this is what it's going to look like when I finish it. And I never finished <laughs> it. <laughs> like, so it never went that far. So you've kind of like, so you're really been into the hobby via your father yes more so he was more into it and you were more you've been a lurker 
So um, that's a good way to put it. And yeah, you've been you've been busy with other things. Like, uh, not if you don't know, uh, he's mentioned music. You're in a very active band, Skyline yes. Red. You can find them on Spotify. Everybody, I suggest it. Yeah, if you thank like you. Yes. hard hard rock heavy metal, good band. Like them. So they're on Spotify. Fun music, by the way. And and of course, Thank you're you. doing the race. You're a busy guy. I can see where model cars really kind of you couldn't you couldn't really make the time for it, but you always had an interest in it. And the fact yeah. that that well, you, I you guys owned a hobby shop for a few years that's pretty interesting. Yeah. So I mean, I we've always loved my brother and I, you know, through my dad and even my mom. Like we've always been into cars, you know. And that started with my grandfather. My grandfather uh, started one of the first motorcycle uh, clubs, the polka dots. I think it's District no, really. 36. He helped, you know, put that together. And then when quarter midgets started becoming a thing, like my dad helped or my grandfather helped open up uh, the track in Rio Linda that Jeff Gordon actually kind of made famous. Yep. 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 So my, my grandfather was one of the people along with, I think it's Pat Francis uh, and a couple other guys. They got that going. My grandfather owned uh, something called the little L I L little midget shop. And it was quarter midgets. Oh, wow. So, so it starts with my grandfather and my grandfather raced, did a bunch of stuff. He did motorcycles. Um, I think he, he raced hard tops. Uh, if I remember right, I think something about boats. Jeez. Um, so, and then a little bit of drag racing. We've always, it's just always been there. So that's never gone away. And as, cool. as I grew up, you know, it was slot cars. It was, we started with the HO slot car stuff. We had model cars. And as I got older, um, you know, we raced RC cars. Then we would do, uh, when one thirty second scale cars really started to get a little bit better from companies like fly, uh, even scale electrics mm -hmm. stopped being so toy like, um, we would buy like one car every Christmas or whatever it was. And those that just kind of slowly kept going on, always in the background. I was heavy, did heavy into music for a long time, took a break, got back into music. Uh, I, you know, ended up getting a family. I had, you know, two kids. And then I started, you know, got the opportunity finally to actually race big cars on my own. So like all those things took up a lot of time, but the idea because we were car people always stayed mm -hmm. and my dad would be like, Hey, check out this new kid or check out what I've been working on. And I'd be like, you know what? Again, I'm, I'm going to be like my dad someday when I'm going to hold on to these kids. I'm going to build something someday. I, I remember building model cars with my dad as a kid and that was great. Um, it just kind of happened to work out where I started to do that at the beginning of the year. So oh, I started wow. like, looking into the kits, realizing that there were way more options now than there ever were. Oh, yeah. And yes. understanding like what had been done with 3D printing. And I was like, I just started getting really, really excited. And I guess what kind of spurred that is I ended up purchasing uh, a 95 Nissan Skyline GTR. And I was looking for a kit. And my brother had just started building probably like November ish, maybe October of last year. And so my brother's showing me what he's doing. And my dad's showing me what he's doing. I'm like, yeah, that's pretty cool. And then when I got the car, I'm like, hey, I wonder if somebody makes a kit of my car. And I happened to find a Fujimi kit of my car. And I was like, oh, I'm going to have to. And then it like exploded because then I started looking at all the JDM and JGTC. Oh, yeah. And, and I was like, Oh my God. And then I started looking at how well the kits nowadays were being redone by yes. round two. And my dad's showing me like all the newer kits, how they were being done. And then the JR Sal uh, Salvino's and just like my brain just went 
I got to start building stuff. There's, there's like in my brain, it was like, there's no better time to do this than my, yeah, my daughter. Was grad, yeah. My daughter grad, my, which is my youngest, my daughter graduated this year. I'm like, Psh, you know what? I get to hang out with my dad. I get to hang out yeah. with my brother. I want, I'm going to do, I'm going to start building model cars. Wow. So you're very new into the hobby as far as getting serious about building, but you've been in the hobby, like we said, lurking. Yeah. So you're not, you're not like, it's just like how you got into the YouTube right away is you've always been doing YouTube. It was something else. And you figure, yeah, what the heck? Right. Cause um, which we haven't even meant, geez, I didn't even say the name of your, your channel. It, it's, it's <laughs> strangely enough. It's called Billy. Str I got to play with that all the time. I know. Strangely okay. enough, it's called Billy strange, <laughs> Billy strange auto modeling. Yes. It's uh, it, right. Is that right? Did I write it down? Right. Auto model. Is it auto model or auto, auto model? Models? Auto model. That's what it is. Let, let's get it right. Um, yeah. So there you go. Of course, everybody, you know, down in the description below, we got a link to it at the end of this of this video podcast. There'll be a link directly to his channel. Um, but go check him out. It, it, I, I, I think you're bringing something fresh. And I, uh, I, I didn't even realize that you were because because us talking and the way you were building. And from what I saw the videos, I would have never guessed that you're like new just a few months ago really seriously building and i can yeah, I mean, really I relate to the fact it's funny how you you know you you are really like what i've always been saying and saying what the future of our hobby is are these uh our older guys maybe middle age or, or late 30s early 40s 50 year olds that the last kid just graduated yeah kind of done playing with the real cars because mm -hmm. it's freaking expensive Oh my god! <laughs> and so, so you you get brutal. you get like ah, oh, I still want to play tinker with cars, and then you find out there's a bunch of other old guys just playing with these little cars. Perfect, it's perfect. You're you're like the perfect uh, example. What I say is what's really the future of the hobby, and you kind of did the same thing I did, even though I I I never was much of a model builder as a kid. I got into it after I was out of high school. And it was, I was looking for a model. I just happened to be in a, uh, a hobby shop because I went there with a girlfriend because it was a toy store also. And I thought, I, I want to what if they got a model of my car? And that's what, that's what sucked me oh, in. Yeah. So that, that's cool. Another thing. Wow. That's exactly what sucked you in. Art. That's kind of what started the streetcar thing was finding a model of my R33 and then realizing I'm a grant. Look. I'm a product of Gran Turismo. So yes. I, that that's that actually got me back into video games, you know, in the 90s, the late 90s was Gran Turismo. And I that's love cool. that series. And now we get yeah. Forza. Yeah. We, we can go down the rabbit hole with that. But <laughs> there's a whole generation of people like me. Yes. That played and still play those those types of uh, games, they're more simulation now than they really were back then, but we thought of them as simulations. And JDM was so new that we in the United mm -hmm. States had no idea what this stuff was. So I'm a, I'm a huge product of Gran Turismo. And when I see the JDM kits, uh, that's for those that don't Japanese domestic market, um, Yes. I lose it just like I lose it when I see a muscle car. Yeah. And so like the idea is I love race cars, but as I've gotten looking through the hobby and looking like at kits that I've missed out on or kits that they're, they're going to be reissuing or that are coming, you know, new kits that are coming out. Uh, I get really excited about that stuff because a, I obviously I don't have it. But B, it kind of taps into my brain and goes like, hey, remember when you did this in Gran Turismo? And, the, and yes. you know, that's where I learned yes. about wheel, like the types of wheels, the aftermarket wheels. And it was, you know, the Gran Turismo 2 started bringing in our domestic cars. So the more right. modern muscle cars, if you will. And um, I, although I knew about some of that stuff, 
And I understood from model building as a kid, I understood the basics of what a car was and how an engine works and that kind of thing. Gran Turismo and then later on Forza and some of these other uh, games and Sims really kind of helped me connect a lot of the dots. And it just makes me excited. Like I see a kid and I'm like, I, I get an idea and I'm just like, yep. man, this is going to be so cool to do blank. And I, I think, I think along the way you're going to have a, the hobby is going to bring a lot of people that are, you know, in my generation. In oh yes. With those kits. And then yes. you have the under, younger generation getting brought in with maybe like a Gundam or something like that. But what it does is it also exposes them to other stuff. So you get your older mus mu muscle cars or race cars. You start looking into street rods and, and things like that. And it's a good segue. Like it. Really oh yeah, is, absolutely. Uh, I guess the better word would be a gateway <laughs> into the hobby. And that's, I mean, that's literally what happened to me. I saw what was available and the 3D printing stuff. And I'm just like, Psh. oh, yeah. The hobby is, is the best it's ever incredible. been. From me, who, uh, you know, I've preached this, every, uh, you know, everybody who's watching this, who watches my channel, will go, oh, God, he's saying it again. But I'm going to say it again. Me, the old guy who I have been continuously in this hobby since 1985, never stopped. It is the best it's ever been. It's the most exciting it's ever been. And and I have always been, I've never been, I, I love cars. I am not a Ford guy. I'm not a Chevy guy. I'm not a, an American yeah. muscle car guy. I'm not a, a JDM guy. I love it all. I yep. love it all. Nice Porsche right here. A nice Camaro right here. They're all cool. <laughs> yeah, look at that. But I got really infatuated with the skyline. When I really was like, discovered the skyline was through Gran Turismo 2 and that Pennzoil car that was I was oh, like oh yeah. I, that was one of my favorites yep that livery so, on that car is oh, so good I love that I love that car so what's what's the skyline thing so I'm sorry and then of course the the age of the way the automotive stuff was on um YouTube back in like 2012 14 15. It's real serious, and a lot of that was on there. And I was getting really, really heavy into learning about the Skyline and, and a lot of the other yeah. cars. But I really took a love for the Sky. If, as a matter of fact, if you go back to my very, probably like my second, third, or fourth, somewhere like my first five videos I did on this channel, Model Cars, I did a whole video on Skylines and the Skyline kit that I bought. And I bought the first Skyline kit I bought which was the, uh, uh, I can't remember the spawn, the blue race car, the, the, uh, the Calsonic. Calsonic. Was it, was it the Tamiya kit? Yeah, the Tamiya Calsonic. Okay. And I, I had bought that, and I, I have this fascination as taking race cars and making them look like street cars and to be like a street legal race car. Okay. I'm, I'm silly like that. So that's what I bought it for. And then I was like, wait a second. And then Andy, all of a sudden, like about that time period, to me, it was just like pounding out the skyline kits. And I was and Andy was getting them. I'm like buying every oh, yeah. single skyline. I've oh, got a yeah. stack of skylines yeah. now. So I just got infatuated with the skyline. Uh funny thing. And it's like, and I know I have a friend of mine in our our model car club who has a shop that specializes in all he built works on his mostly Porsches, 911s, and stuff like okay. that. And he just bought a skyline. I think he's got an R32. Yes, for thirty-three, um, and then you got yours. Now I, I, oh, I'm jealous. It just happened to work out like it. That's it, that's freaking. Yeah. I mean, if anybody, if people don't know about Skylines and it, the what it takes to own one, it's a little easier now. It's easier because you can legally import them without yeah. having to hold on to them or register them weirdly. And right. I got mine actually California legal too. Yeah. There, you, so, there was a time they were contraband. They were literally yes. listed as contraband. Yep, they got, well, that's how, uh, what was it? Some of the the uh, Fast and Furious cars got crushed or something like that because yeah. they were they were considered, you know, they, they were, were here illegal and they just, and you're like, that, oh, do you know God. what that car is? Oh, it hurts me in the heart. Yep. Well, I was at my car hangout that I got a couple years ago 
mostly muscle car street rods, old guys into their hot rods and stuff. And uh, I hear this car rumbling by and look at it. And I turn around and I saw it was an R32. Yeah. And I was like, guys, I got to go. And I started booking across. I was watching where he was going to park. I needed it. It's the first time ever seeing one in up close for me. I was like, I, I just spotted, you know, a rock star or they, movie, they uh, like a movie star. Yeah. <laughs> and I was, and everybody was like, I don't, it's just a Nissan. No, it's not just a Nissan. Just, yeah. And it's like that with any car. When you grow up, you get an attachment to whatever you get an yeah. attachment to. And so when, especially something that feels foreign or rare, uh, you're always going to have that gravitation. Um, like you, I just like a boatload of different cars. And yeah, so again, too. this hobby has been really eye-opening and it's very exciting. <laughs> Maybe it's a little too exciting because my collection kind of exploded, but <laughs> I uh, yeah. like everybody that like, Oh, yeah. I, I like, I like all of it. I've had to limit yeah. myself to like, Okay, I'm gonna kind of keep it from '60s to like you know 2000s, and then there's like a smattering of older cars and newer cars that I'll get. It's not gonna work, Billy. I know. I look. It's not gonna I work. To I'm gonna. I'm just I gonna try to give myself limits here. It's not gonna work. I'm trying to stay away from motorcycles because I I've uh, I've owned like three or four uh, sport bikes. Oh boy. Uh, GSXR 600 oh, one an 04 R1, an Aprilia. RSV 1000 R. What was it? A uh, 20, 2007. Oh yeah. 2008. And then a uh, 2010. What is it? I always mix the numbers up. I believe it's an 1199, a Ducati. So oh, boy, I knew somebody I had love, one of those. I love, oh. I love all this stuff like racing. Yeah. Like I'm not specific into, Oh, I only love sports cars. I only love stock cars. I like it all. I mean, I watched it all as a kid, like, and my dad was, really instrumental in getting me to understand. I may not have had the knowledge of what it was like to race when I was a kid, uh, but he was instrumental in instilling the differences of each kind of series and what it took to be good and, and the strategies. And so like, I, I love all of this stuff. And again, yeah, I'm, I may not be able to take this and drive it, you know, that's why slot cars, the 30 second scale slot cars were so much fun because in our store, that's what we catered to was the 30 second scale slot cars and then models. I basically gravitated to taking care of the 30 second scale slot cars because now we were getting stuff that was accurate mm -hmm. for the most part. Yeah. And so we would get old stuff. We'd get GT 40s and then we get the latest LMP or whatever uh, car that was coming out. And then you get group C and it. Oh boy. How I felt about slot cars at that time is how I feel about models because uh, yeah, I mean, we got into it. I, we, I figured out how to build hand routed uh, wood tracks and I've never picked up a router in my life. <laughs> and oh, we, geez. we, so I started building tracks. I built, we built a couple for the store um, you know, my dad and I figured it out and then I, I built a handful for, for other people and, you know, we owned oh, that boy. store for six years. Um, it was a lot of work. It was, it was a lot oh, of work. Yeah. And I kind of like took a back seat after that to the, the model car stuff and really focused on playing music or not model car, but uh, 30 second scale stuff. But it's kind of the same thing. You, if you're a car oh, person yeah. and then you see all of these cars available and the great thing is i'm not having to tune these cars I, yeah it's tuning slot cars that takes a lot of time it does now now this is more concentrated on what do i want the car to look like so like stance um and the way the car appears like it would if it were driving down the street is really important to me so i want to get it to look how just like anybody else the street yeah. cars are fun because you kind of put your own artistic flair or touch to it. And it's how you would want to see it rolling down the road. If it was your car, like if you walked out in your driveway or into your garage and that was your car, mm -hmm. that's the cool part about 
this hobby. And again, you've yeah. got like STS and a handful of guys making decals for you or doing, uh, you can find aftermarket decals now and everything is so good. Like yeah, everything. I don't know. I, I just, I found myself because of YouTube and you go back and we talk about, you know, maybe I don't seem like I just started really building models on my own, but I have you guys along with my dad and my brother and, and a couple friends that I have that build models like John and, and Roger that are in our car club. And my learning curve is greatly accelerated because of you guys. And I, yeah. I know it gets touched on, but I don't think you guys, I mean, I'm, and I'm not speaking like just a small group of people. There's a large range of oh, people yeah. that I watch on YouTube and I'm always learning or picking something up from everybody. Like I'm a sponge. I want to absorb all this stuff. And then I'll kind of figure out like, as I'm doing, you know, the Porsche kit for that, for uh, the scale model car podcast. Oh, well, uh, those guys. Yeah. yeah. Those guys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Why you listen to that? No, I love actually. I love podcasts. I love listening to the stuff. There you go. I learn like, okay, how am I going to implement this uh, to get the right height the way I want? How am I going? Yeah. I listen to painting techniques, and again, I'm listening and watching, and then I'm asking my dad what he does, my brother what he does, like everybody, and it just greatly accelerates the fun. Number one, because I'm not doing a paint job that I absolutely hate, or at least I'll figure out what I did wrong. Uh, and B the, just the amount of techniques and tips that I can like put in my, my bag and go like, Oh, Hey, I remember so-and-so did this. Let me try that. Did I do it right? Did I not do it right? Where did I make a mistake? And I can go back to the video and either oh, listen yeah. or watch again and realize what I, what I didn't get correctly. I'm like, Oh, they did this. I missed a step or, oh, I see they were using something else. I'm not using. Let me go try doing that stuff. So I don't know. The whole thing has just been fun. And I, and I realized part of that is probably the honeymoon period or the newness of it all. We go back to the digital stuff like Gran Turismo and you can paint your own cars and do that. It was always fun. There is something that's really neat about having it be tangible and trying to figure out how to implement something like that onto something physical. And I know everybody yeah, worries about I everything just, being digital and, and all that. And no, there's always going to be that. This is a nice break in a way. Mm -hmm. Like it, it, it's a nice divergence, just like if you're doing anything else. If you're playing drums and then you start, right, you start playing bass or you start playing guitar or maybe you pick up mm -hmm. the banjo or the piano or something. It's all in the same area. Yeah, exactly. But you're using techniques from other things that you've learned and implementing them in a different way. And for me, that's what makes this stuff fun. Not, not only that, I've gotten to meet a boatload of, of great people online mm -hmm. and in person. I got to, you know, I had no idea. Um, Ted from Rattle Can Shenanigans is yeah. one of my local uh, clubs. Mm -hmm. I have like three clubs that I go to now. And he's in one of the clubs. I got to meet him. And then we started hanging out at the shows. And then I got to meet uh, Elliot from Scale Effect. I got to meet John from JD's House of Hobbies. Great people. Yeah. Not to mention the other people that I've gotten to meet at model car shows. It's been so much fun. And I am not a person, even though I talk like this, and I've done YouTube since like 2013, I think, uh, in various you know channels and capacities. I'm not actually an extrovert. I'm an introvert. Like I... You know, this, this, this hobby is very, you feel like it's very singular. You're on your own, you're building, mm -hmm. you know, this is it. Uh, but I feel like I've gone to what, three or four shows now. And then gone to the model car meetings. Like half of this hobby is talking. It's to very, people. it's very social. It, 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 but it doesn't feel like it because when you're building, it feels very singular. It feels very on your own, but even going to shows, um, you know, and I took my Mercedes, I've taken it every show. It hasn't won anything. You know, I don't care about that stuff. It sparks a conversation with somebody though. Mm -hmm. So now I'm, if you've watched one of the videos that I do after a show, I'm an advocate for going, even if yes. you don't feel like your model is of a good enough quality, you put that down on the table 
and it's a conversation starter. It's a way to uh, introduce yourself to somebody else, to make new friends, to make connections, to learn things. It, it has been fantastic going to model car shows. Yes. So like this whole thing, um, I know, I guess I'm sounding like a huge advocate for everything, but it just, no, it, no, it's, it's that's really what cool. this channel's about. Please go on. <laughs> yeah. It's just been really cool. Um, and I appreciate everybody, you know, yourself, BG. I mean, I could, my, the, my subscribe list is now a mile long of model car people. Yeah. Um, that happens. It, it, yeah. And it's a credit to you all for taking the time to show people like myself uh, and others, but like somebody like me that doesn't have the background in doing some of this stuff. You know, my dad helps me, but then I'm learning stuff independently of my dad or my brother. And I'm bringing techniques to them. Hey, have you tried this? And they're like, oh, no. I haven't, this is what so-and-so said. And it's been really cool. Like my dad is, is a big engine guy. Yeah. So that's where he focuses. I mean, he's really into the engine part and then he chops channels, kit bashes. He's always done that. The one video that I did for the, uh, Autorama, that's his hot rod. Oh, no kidding. That's, that's the thumbnail. That's his, he won best to show. It's a rattle cam paint job and he, he has an nice. airbrush that'll yes, stand forever. That was cool. And when it comes to that stuff and like learning how to fill things in and stuff, I grab a whole lot from where he's he's uh, got his experience from. My brother, even though he just really got into it, uh, he's gone into detail. Like I, I my brain <laughs> is like, <laughs> oh my god, that's way too much. <laughs> But it looks incredible. Like he's putting throttle cables and brake lines, and nice. he just he did a the Tyrrell, uh, the six wheel Tyrrell, the P thirty four to me, yeah, the thirty four, and yeah, and he did photo wedged. He did all this stuff, and he starts Gosh. pulling off the cowling and everything. I'm just like, so I can go to him if I want to get that deep. I can go to my dad if I want to get deep on the engines, and then anything else that I feel like I'm missing, I go to YouTube. And start looking oh, yeah. it up, or sometimes again watching people uh, do things that I never even thought of. I'm like, oh, that's a really great idea, and I, I put it in my bag. So I don't know. I'd like being an advocate, I guess, for doing stuff like this. I've gotten people from sim racing. That's why my uh, we'll talk about this. My my subscriber number looks kind of weird because that was a sim racing channel. Uh, but the cool part is I've been getting people that have followed me for years th through the sim racing stuff that, it, hey, I picked up a kit. Hey, I started building or, dude, I've been building models forever. This is so cool that you build models. And oh, that's neat. really, that's, fun. yeah, it's really I'm fun. I'm not surprised. I think part of where I'm at is A, to show what somebody that's excited about the hobby that's fairly new, you know, even though I understand I've, I've got a history with the hobby, I'm I, I would consider myself new to the building part to kind of give that perspective show like, Hey, this is what I learned from this person. This is what, and this is my struggle as a new person, maybe doing this thing. And here's what yeah. I learned how to not do it. Or did you even know that this kit and I'll, you know, pick up a kit. Did you even know that this existed? Because while maybe the seasoned modeler may know this kit is around guys like myself may not. And then you see something like that, whether it's a muscle car or JDM, hot rod, whatever, and go, oh, man, look at that. And it might spark somebody's interest to either start building again or to start building for the first time. I love yeah. making content and I didn't want to stop. And I was kind of tired of the sim racing stuff. And I was like, I'm already starting to get into the model car stuff. And then all of a sudden I had no idea of model car on, like I said, model car stuff on YouTube was a thing. And then. I think the first video I watched it's was Doug Wang. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, and that's a like, good introduction. And I was like, holy cow, this is awesome. And then it just started pinging me through everybody. Like, you know, Jeez, all... you started off with Doug White and, <laughs> and then the, I mean, that's like, I'm mean, my personal opinion of Doug White's channel. That is the best. It's so good. model car, model car channel on YouTube. Sorry, right. everyone. He, I, he is the best. Well, he's he's got a completely different lane different. that he occupies. Yeah. And it, there's, that's there's value in the person that's using their phone. 
like you know oh absolutely see the microphone here i got a you know i just got a different camera because i like the color in this camera better and if auto blah 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 you don't need all this stuff no you don't um, if you want to start sharing your hobby and what it really has felt like is as i got into it and started making my own content it feels like a giant model car club oh absolutely like, you know, between Absolutely. everybody, it fed Doug White's video fed me to old Tom and, and I'm trying oh, to think, yeah. I don't like leaving everybody out, but I, I my brain kind of goes, because there's so many people that I watch and, and they know, like I comment on their videos and I'm finding new people all the time. And I don't, I want to encourage those people to continue to make content Oh and yes, to show us what they're building because a, it feels like a mall, a car club that I can access at any time. And then B, if I don't learn something from your first video, I'm going to learn something from you later on. So, you know, be authentic, be yourself. Uh, don't worry. You know, I, I have to do this because my subscriber numbers go down because <laughs> they go yeah. down because of my, my sim racing stuff. You know, people are like, oh, well, I didn't sign up to watch model car stuff and they unsubscribe. And I know that's going to happen. So I watch my views. And I, and I try to figure out what's working, what's not. A big adjustment for me is it seems like model car people really like short videos, which is not the norm for sim racing stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so making an adjustment, but also doing it how I want to do it. And whether I may be doing like a walkthrough of something or maybe just kind of giving you a synopsis. I want to try different formats. I want to try different things. I, I'm always moving lighting and changing colors and i you know that's just oh, kind of yeah, how i yeah. like to do things it, it evolves I, I mean i've been doing it for seven years and i look at my early videos and some of the stuff i do which i'd like to bring some things back you know i do it totally different now and and because of like i'm in a different house a different room i've got different equipment different lightings that my whole style has changed but the one thing that i focused in and it was something you know I noticed something about your channel, what I really liked. Uh, my thing was right off the bat, I wanted it to be like, you're my buddy. The audience is like yeah. my pal coming into my model room. Mm -hmm. Like uh, my old model room, I could do this. I set the camera off kind of like off the this thing where I'd be at my bench and I go, oh, hey, fellow car modeler. Oh, yeah. Type I, thing. Okay, yes, I, yeah, I yeah, remember. I, watching I, I, I really yeah. want to do that. I, my way my room is like, it's hard to do that. I want to bring that back so bad. But the the other thing is is I and I always advise all my all my pals. I remember I, I told this to BG because he wasn't doing a lot, Chuck and all that. I go, guys, get a camera and put it on your face. Let everybody get to know you and be it's one it, of the it biggest, becomes a yeah. friendly thing. And that's something that I like about your channel. I really like how you're like, I mean, you're at your desk. Like what what we see right now, that's how your channels are. It's almost like a your channel is kind of a commentary thing. I don't know. I just, I just really like that. I think it's personable and and it's like you're reporting on some things, but you're, but you're talking to your audience like we're all friends. You have a different flair to it that I haven't seen in other channels. So that's where I thought, wow, this guy's doing something a little different, and it's going to be another take on on another view to find out that you're new, but you're not new to the hot. Yeah, it's it's a but little. Hard to explain. It's, it's like, an interesting. It's a yeah. really interesting take. And now that I, I didn't really realize that until we started talking on this show. Now that I look back at what I've watched of your channel, it makes total sense of how you're doing it. And and I think it's just a really cool take. And we're starting to see it. it's like my last show I I did with Mike. Come on, Allah, Mike. It's like wow, you've only been. He's just got into it. You know, he sold his business and he's just got into the a hobby and. It's what the heck so i want to do of what he does too for not being in it oh my goodness you know, yeah he, said he started in what 2022 or 2020 yeah like that. and, and i didn't like, know that until my building i thought he'd been doing it forever and i'm just like, i know it's just like again something that i have always been saying where people are going the kid and and i'm not knocking the kids by all get the kids building models obviously everybody knows it felix is such a major part of my life my daughter was I got her building in models when she was young and it evolved into things that she does today. Yes. Get the kids involved. But don't worry about them as the future of the hobby. They might be later on, but what the future yes, of the hobby the is, is it's, a 30 something year old away. guy who his last kid just graduated and mm -hmm. he's, and he's 
and he's you know it loves cars but the hot rods are already built and you're not going to do that anymore because it kills you in these days and in, in money so man let's uh yeah let's start building little cars and then like you said you start to learn all these you're meeting all these new friends that were all a bunch of gearheads so we still look at how many and i'm telling you there are a lot of guys out there that have the racing background like you and i yeah and, i just discovered that larry from larry's model shop ran like a like a street stock or something like that in hawaii in the 80s i was yeah. like i had no idea you raced <laughs> and like we talked about mike you know he had his jeep shop and yep. his, his brother does a does a modified north northeast modified mark batson mark batson we right. both were you know he goes way oh, back man. in nascar wait what thing to so, his stories and his knowledge oh, on all that yeah. like he's doing that that mustang that he crewed <laughs> oh that thing is yes. so cool like i aspire to be able to do even just the body work let alone yeah. all of it his finishing work that he does on the interior and the like just doing the body and making it look like that car that he worked on that like that's where i aspire to be mm -hmm. to do that kind of stuff because that's what really gets my brain going is just yeah. the aesthetic of what the car does because it's you know it's what you see going down the street so yeah it or around the track yeah and most you find the majority of the model car builders they're real car guys they got a hot rod in the garage or they had one they they used to be a mechanic they still are a mechanic they restore vehicles we like these little cars because we were into cars mm -hmm. you know we're into cars so we all have this un un uniting common thing so it's such a creative thing and and look at how you're you know when you're when the guys that get into this new and they discover all the cool stuff that there is and all the cool things you can do with a model yeah, it's addictive you're learning early for sure now oh huh? yeah yeah i mean i've but, gone down the 3d printing rabbit hole getting stuff from like oh. iceman and texas 3d customs and i think there's a couple oh mcv and just like i was so impressed by the qual the i remember when we were doing the the slot car stuff and 3d printing was just really starting to come to fruition so yeah in the slot car world the 30 second scale stuff fly made amazing looking cars but they typically ran like garbage and you really had to do a lot of work to them mm -hmm. uh they started making 3d printed chassis so that you could put all the good components underneath it and stuff like that and but i remember what those look like guys were trying to print 3d bodies and they were real yeah. rough yeah, and 3D to see rough. the leaps that have been made in the 3d printing world is astounding to me because i didn't know until i started looking up like again i'm watching somebody's channel like i picked up this from iceman or i picked up this from texas i'm looking at it going like oh my god look at that and then I'm, i gotta get me some of these so like you yeah, know getting it, the engines or getting uh the wide uh, look i'm a sucker for fender flares like so the wide body <laughs> stuff really yeah really yeah you and me both brother yeah you man it me gets broke. me really excited for like what you can do for a car because i love yeah kind of in the same realm as you i do like the idea of taking a car and then giving it a almost race car s flare to it or at least lowering it putting on some cool wheels yeah. that kind of thing fender flare stuff just makes it look a little bit more racy mm -hmm. you know wide body kits make it look just a little bit more racy so i don't necessarily want it to be a race car but i kind of want to hint at it in that direction so yeah that all that stuff it's oh yeah it's, it's so impressive and cool and um the amount of people though that i see like if we go to your facebook group or something and see people that don't know about this stuff and being able to have a channel or being able to have something that you can show them like hey look mm -hmm. this is look at you're asking for this they they do this like yeah here you go like you can you can do this and the idea of well learning to build it on your own like that that's part of the modeling process but i think how you get somebody to that point now I think it's a much easier gateway and a much easier step is to show them the 3d printing stuff. Yes. Go get your favorite kit, then get whatever it is that you're looking for. Either you're trying to do an engine swap. You're trying to do a wide body kit. Maybe you're just trying to put like a, a different uh, set of wheels, 
and tires or a, a lip spoiler or anything like that. There's so much you can find and it, it kind of gets you moving in that direction. And then it's not quite so it's intimidating. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the guys that have been doing this forever, it's like no big thing, but for somebody new that has an idea in their head, it's intimidating to like, I just spent all this money on this kit and now I'm going to chop it up and like do all these. And so it's wonderful to have the 3d printing stuff where you can grab it and be like, dude, okay, I can put this on. I can get the look out of it. I might have to do a little bit of body modification. I can watch somebody, you know, uh, I know you've done tutorials. Everybody's done tutorials. Oh yeah. Like, and it's, of and it. it's invaluable for somebody like myself. That doesn't make yeah. it feel quite so intimidating. I can look at what you guys are doing um, and be like, okay, I, I get that. I understand. So let me try. I guess moreover, I'm appreciative of what people put out there and then going to shows and everybody's super cool um, getting to meet again. Well, I know I'm like circling the wagon here, but meeting people online like this, it's inspiring. Like it's reinvigorating to know that what you're doing, like there are other people doing it. And I think that you kind of want to keep people in the hobby. Things go in cycles. You're always, yeah, you'll always yeah. go in and out, but like keeping people in the hobby and it, and it's just so cool that what's out there, it's like, man, I guess maybe selfishly, like I don't want people to get out of it, out of it because I want more cool stuff to be done. So <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I guess maybe you that's know, a little bit of a selfish streak <clears throat> there. One thing that I have found through like, people talking on the Facebook group, meeting people online, having people on the podcast, this podcast or, or our podcast, the scale model car podcast is so many people have talked about how they got into the hobby. Then they left the hobby for a while and they got into the hobby. The one thing that I notice about now having this network of even, even and I do know of people that are kind of stuck out where they don't have hobby shops and, and model car people to hang out with. So all they have is the YouTube, but they have that outreach that they can sit down on the bench. Now with the, now everybody stream, they get onto a live stream or they watch videos, they correspond, people start talking. And it's like, you're starting to find people that they come into the hobby and they tend to stay in it more now. Cause they got friends. Yeah. I know that's a big thing with me why i stayed in the hobby because there was a point some things happened here locally if i didn't have my core group of model car buddies i would have left the hobby and probably never came back i stayed in it because i had my friends it pretty much the majority of my closest friends i'm well geez really all of them they're model car people and and that's who i've been friends with for 40 years is throughout the years different model car people and that's that just has kept me on track of staying in the hobby. I think about quitting, selling all this stuff. I don't want to do it anymore. It's like, no, man, I, I want to hang with my friends. On. Yeah, yeah, it's not going to happen. So, yeah. I, you know, it's it's been such an important part of my life, and I'm so happy to see the direction it's going. And and meeting someone like you and Mike and so many other people that are are just getting back into it or getting in it to it for the first time at the age of 40 or 50. Oh, that is so cool. That is just so cool. And I've noticed that because I've always kind of like been connected to the hobby over the past 20 years, outreaching all over because I've, I've had resin casting companies mm -hmm. and I've met people through that for years, having customers and how many times I would get a letter or an email from a guy who bought some product for me that was 50 years old that used to build hot rods and the kids are gone and I'm just getting into this and this is cool and you're inspiring me by you know what you put on the forums and all the other people and and your product and this is neat I can build this model I, of a car I always dreamed of actually owning. That's why I've always said that's the future of the hobby. I get similar stories from my dad. My I mean um, my dad is kept in contact with um, his friend Paul and then Ron Zufelt, which was part of Sam mm -hmm. and uh, a handful of there was Jerry Amaral. Man, even when we had the store, I think Roy Kinji, I think um, there was a, uh, this gentleman, Marshall, that always used to come in and 
my dad has kept in contact with all those people. It and it's weird because you don't I don't I never got this kind of stuff with the video game slash sim racing. So like I started doing YouTube in 2013. I had this great idea that I was gonna <laughs> for, for the podcast listeners, that was a gigantic eye roll. Um I had this idea that I was going to give my take on video games. I love video games. I yes. play every I played almost everything. You know, I play shooters, uh racing games. One of my favorite is survival horror stuff. I was like, man, I'm gonna do this because I'm I've I've got a collection of games. I kind of want to archive things. And at that time, like the archiving process on YouTube wasn't there were people doing it, but it wasn't as ubiquitous as it is now. Yeah. So I was like, I'm gonna contribute. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna I got some obscure stuff. I'm gonna put this on YouTube. And I quickly realized that I wasn't very good at it. <laughs> I was, I was, <laughs> I was pretty crappy. And so I was like, well, maybe I need to focus on something more that I'm really, really familiar with because I'm not amazing at video games. I love playing video games. I'm not, a, I'm not amazing at them though. So you're not going to run like around kill level. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you're not going to see some high level, you know, playing from me. Um, but I do love telling stories and I do love showing people and, and archiving things like, so I was like, well, maybe I'll just focus on racing games. And so I kind of started playing around with the racing game stuff on my YouTube channel. And then I was like, is this really what I want to do? Kind of took a break, then started doing it again. And I, I got into like actual sim racing. Like I only had consoles before and then got into the PC stuff. Biggest sim racing channel was uh, a channel called Inside Sim Racing. It's hosted by two guys, Darren and Sean, and they were the go-to. There were other channels that were big, but they were the biggest one. They were kind of like the OG. They started sim racing YouTube. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, I really, I was jealous. Like I saw this stuff on PC. I'm like, I really want to do that. So I started doing it on my own. I'm like, you know what? I have a unique perspective. I can sim race, but I'm also, I race cars. And I wasn't mm -hmm. seeing anybody do that. So I was trying to give a perspective. And then when Inside Sim Racing was looking for another person to add to their staff and kind of like a, uh, what's it called? Freelance kind of, kind yeah. of way. I'm like, I'll do this. I applied and never heard back. Oh. So I, can, so I continued to do my stuff. And uh, they asked, it. they were, again, they had somebody, they left and they were looking for somebody else. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to apply again. I'm just, and it worked. I had a meeting right on. Uh, Darren and at the time John was his co-host. They were super nice. And that's where I learned the lighting and the microphone stuff and every, that's where I learned all this stuff from that is now carried over into this channel and doing the model car stuff. So it's all been a process. I like the process. I like all of this stuff. I try to present it just like I did my sim racing stuff. I try to present it as you don't need the latest and greatest thing. You just need things that you're familiar with. You and me, you know, I try to take people on the journey. Like you said, the conversational thing. I try right. to make it so where this is like you're hanging out with me and you're building model cars for me right across the table. Whether I'm doing a synopsis or whether I'm doing, you know, kind of like a walkthrough. It, or maybe I'm just showing you kits that I that I got. It's It's meant to be an engaging thing so that you feel like you're a part of something because I want you to be a part of this. I want you to be a part of this hobby. I want you to be excited about it. I want you to stay in it. I want you to uh, go to, if you've never been to a model car show, I want to encourage you to go to a model car show. If you, if you have clubs in the area, if you're fortunate enough to have clubs in the area and you've never been to a club, I want to encourage you go to a model car club. It's going to be great. I promise you, they're going to be so happy that you you came and decided to hang out and share your experience. Oh, yeah. oh, if you're 100%. thinking about making a channel, go ahead and make a channel. Yes. You don't need all this stuff. You can just do whatever it is you're doing. You don't need to, you know, I have very rudimentary and basic editing skills. You don't really need those. Now, now there, I think you know this because we talked about music. The most important thing is audio yeah you can kind of get by with maybe not such a super great uh picture 
uh, it's a little more important because you're trying to show people what you're doing, but your audio quality is pretty much what will turn people off if it's not very good. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I just recently found a channel, checked it out and I, I got off but the audio was so bad. The, the video was fine and what they were saying, but it was just like, yeah, it just, I lost it. I, I got off it. And I want to encourage those people. Like yeah, if you're making content, um, I'll tell you what I got, but you don't need it. Yeah. You can get a wireless lavalier. You can get even, um, even with your phone, you can get a step, a desk stand microphone, or you can get anything. Um, trust your ear, get a nice sounding audio. Um, you do not have to spend a boatload of money and I want to hear, I want to, I want to hear what you got to say. I want to, I want to yeah. see what you're, what you, what you're working on. I think that's kind of the approach that I've always taken. And I want I just kind of brought it to here and I don't know if I'm really doing anything unique, uh, as far as like, you're not going to get any like mind blowing tips from me because I'm learning. Um, but if I can show you, and maybe that inspires you. Uh, to either pick up a kid on your own or to start a channel and and get you invested and involved, then that's that's the kind of repertoire I want to have. I want to, uh, at some point, I used to live stream all the time with the sim racing stuff. I will get to the point where I live stream when I get a little bit more comfortable with my setup, uh, live stream model car stuff. Yeah. So that you can come in and we can we can talk about stuff in real time. I don't know. That's the kind of stuff I want to encourage. Now, here I am. I'm a guy who's been heavily into the model car thing for getting close to 40 years. You're kind of new into it. But what I got off of watching your channel, and I enjoy this more than that, you know, trying to get onto a channel to learn tips. I just liked, I like talking to model car guys and seeing what they're working on. And you're channel up first of all the audio is very good on there so it's very pleasant to listen to you talk very right. well but and it, i was just watching yeah and i was i was just watching your your videos of you just talking about what you're working on and how far you've gotten and i just find i find as being into this hobby and liking model cars and and hanging with model car people i like to talk to other model car people Yes. and see what they're working on and that's what you were that's what you were giving me as the audience at that moment and and i think that that's a that's that's a really that's that's a cool thing it's 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 inspiring no matter what it doesn't matter how amazing or just coming into the hobby that your model building skills are we still can inspire one another you know it's like Absolutely. like we were we were on the live stream you know you're working on your porsche and you were bashing your head in because of the the, <laughs> the <laughs> yeah the, the roll cage in this thing the roll like, cage idiot? is horrific like, and i, I understand. yeah you were no, you I were thinking it. am i stupid am i stupid and so i happen to have the same kit yes. so i went and i busted the kit out and i got it all up and i got the roll cage in and i go billy you're not stupid <laughs> <laughs> they it they they missed it on this one so you're okay. Continue yeah. on. <laughs> and that's it was, kind of, you were perplexed, man. You oh, were man, perplexed. It was, I my brain, like I talked about it on the mall cars and coffee video I just put out. I my yeah. brain, I was just like, I I don't understand what I'm doing wrong. Like I, I feel like I'm doing something wrong because this is not how I know how a roll cage fits. This is not how a roll cage fits in a car. And again, this kind of goes back to I guess the maybe the primary point of what maybe this podcast is, is that interacting. Yes. With people. Yep. 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 Just made that experience, even though I was struggling, like you took the time to be like, Oh, well, hold on. Let me, I got it. Let me go look. Cause there's only one of two things going to happen. Either I'm correct. Or you'd be like, Oh, Billy, what you're missing is this. Mm -hmm. You'd be like, Oh, Okay, thanks. I can now put the model together the way it's supposed to be put together. That that doesn't I don't think if you've only really paid attention to like the model car space on YouTube. I don't think you I don't think maybe you realize not you. I'm saying the royal no, you. You're you're speaking um, of the Yeah, that that doesn't 
it happens in other spaces, but not the same way. And I don't know how best to articulate this. It just doesn't feel the same. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel like I'm being judged. Does that make sense? Like, oh, totally, totally. Yes, you were you were genuinely like, well, I got that kit. Let me let me look. Instead of being like, oh, I got that kit. Here, I'll show you. But it's like, how could you miss this? kind of thing and that gets really discouraging oh you I didn't that. hear what i you didn't hear after you got okay. off what I said. <laughs> perfect well uh, you know what i'll still take it um <laughs> the i i learned that in the store uh that we yeah. had when it came to trying to get people excited and in, into the slot car stuff i don't want you walking away frustrated i want you to walk away being excited and even though you may not feel like you're as fast as somebody or you understood every little setup point. What I want to do is be like, you got this, like you, you can do this. This is just the thing you've got to work on, but you can do it. Like, I'm not trying to make you feel stupid for not, not doing the thing that I said to do. Mm -hmm. I want you to get excited and I want you to be encouraged and come. I want you to come back as a, again, as a business person, as being selfish, I want you to come back. Yeah. Yeah. But this is no different. I, yeah. I guess if there's like an overarching theme to this whole thing is that people can do this. Don't feel like your stuff isn't as good as somebody else's go meet some people, talk to people online. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was a huge, you know, you talk about lurking earlier as far as the hobby itself, but like on YouTube, when it came to sim racing stuff, I was a huge lurker. It was very rare that I commented on a video. Live streams a little different because it feels like the interactions a little different, but doing the, leaving a comment on a video was just an invitation for somebody to be a jerk to you. This is nice that it doesn't feel like that. This is nice that I can comment on somebody's video to the person and it feels like either it's positive reinforcement or maybe I'm giving them a suggestion of something. BG had one of his videos where he had a kit and I was like, I left a comment. I was like, oh, hey, like I actually have this from, and it's um, now I can't even think of what the manufacturer is, but I said, I've got like a set of these kits from that particular manufacturer. And I believe they're, it's a Japanese kit. And he's like, oh, wow. I didn't even know those things existed. Mm. Like, and that kind of stuff is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. The cool the interaction that has just, turned into what's made this hobby stronger and better and it's not going anywhere and that's super cool and we keep having like new people coming in like you and mike and everything i love it when there's new people that come in and are as excited and want to be a part of it like you guys yeah billy i i want to thank you a ton for taking the time to come on to my stupid little show and yeah. and no, the, uh before we go mine, like I, um I, I, I we had a blast talk and even like before the the things were happening <laughs> what everybody here saw and i'm sure we're going to get together quite a few times later on and, and have conversations yeah that would uh, be great but, and yeah. i love doing that kind of stuff by the way i, oh, I, I like if yeah, somebody wants so to do a channel fun. collab or wants to just i don't know like oh you you're definitely you know i i'm definitely already want to do some collab work with you and and you're going to have others that want to do it it's that's that's i love collabing with other youtubers it's it's my favorite thing yeah. and but, but i'll tell you that. Con yeah that's what it is i love conversation and i love model car conversation at for sure but billy before we go i want you to take the chance to talk about your channel real quick and let everybody know where they can find you and um, do the sales pitch and you know what i'm going to do i didn't do it in the beginning like i usually do but i'm going to give you the total stage what do you think Oh boy. Well, uh, Billy Strange Auto Models, you can see the logo. That's from my sim racing stuff, Billy Strange Racing, but all in the same. Uh, obviously on YouTube, I do, I have a link to my Instagram as well. I post on there every once in a while, but it's mainly just the YouTube stuff. And I don't know, I don't have like a very specific like focus for the channel other than just model car stuff, whatever, whatever strikes my fancy i've got <laughs> all these uh <laughs> with the exception of the car up top if i go this way there we go um those are all group builds i encourage you to get involved with group builds they have been a it kind of makes it a little easier for me to decide what i'm going to build but b 
this is the only reason um, I feel like maybe not the only reason, but the major reason why I ended up talking to everybody was getting involved with the group builds. Uh, so get involved with, you know, I have to do be an idiot and do as many as I'm doing, but get yeah, involved right. with the group build. It's, it opens doors to make new friends and have conversations that you just didn't realize that were possible. So I guess if that's my pitch, that's my pitch. <laughs> that, that is an awesome pitch. And the links are in the description down below to his Instagram and to his channel. And of course, at the end of this video, there's going to be a little thing you can click on and go straight to his channel. Please do that. Check out the channel. Give Billy a like and a subscribe. And uh, well, you know, you'll be seeing him around for a while. I got, I got a feeling he's going to be sticking around. So uh, thank you. Great very to much. have you on. And uh, now we're down to this part of the show that I put the guest uh -oh. up uh -oh. on. Yeah, I, I definitely put you back against the wall on this one. You got to do something. Everybody has to. Are you ready? Are you, are you ready to get yeah, back up I, on front know, of the stage and do this? Yeah, we'll, we'll do this. And okay, here we go. I was I was going to do the joke thing. I was going to sit there and do like something to the effect of like, you know, glue your face to the styrene and, and all this. But you know what? I think I'm going to take a cue from Scale Model Outlaw and we're going to attempt to do this proper properly uh so keep gluing your fingers together keep cutting that styrene and i'm gonna tell you have fun storming the castle thank you so much <laughs> for having me on thanks <laughs> thanks for hanging out that's a call back to yeah I'm oh yeah doing that now because i it, i know yeah that being yep. such a good little thing, i think so. you should just keep that on your channel yeah. all the time now yeah that that's definitely uh and and you know what everybody real quick about the storming the castle you Got to go watch it's this Jason. video. Do a snap. Do a snap. That video right there of our buddy Jason over at Blue Axe Model Shop. Billy kind of does a cameo. <laughs> <laughs> and it was oh, that was know, great. I didn't, I didn't even know people were going to get the reference, and then when everybody oh, started laughing, I was like, "Oh, it's the most the awesome." Reference. I tell you, I I watched that, and I I didn't realize it was you because I couldn't recognize the voice, but. It just, it cracked me up. And then, uh, you know, that, that was just funny. And then I found out it was you. I go, oh, cool. He's funny too. <laughs> <laughs> Only on or, certain days. Or a smart ass funny. I like smart ass funny. It's, it's, it's probably well, thank you. Milk. Well, thank you very much, man. This was a lot of fun. Definitely uh, storm that castle, everyone. <laughs> and then what I always say is, here's the producers. Here's the producers.